This week we build a custom mission style dining table that seats eight. Stick with us. My parents donated this pine table to us when we first got married, and it served as our first kitchen table and our kids' homework desk, too. You can even see the pen marks and the indentations in the surface. Now, as we make plans to move to a new home, and before I completely pack up the wood shop, my wife, aka the boss, has asked that we make a nicer dining table for eight that also better matches the look of our mission style chairs. So let's talk about a plan. Now, I'm a big fan of the craftsman style, mission style furniture designs, and I'm looking for these legs to be beefy with four vertical staves that match the chairs on the original table. And I'm gonna add some other design features like an arch that closely matches the Charles Limbert rocker that I built last year and include some visible dowels as well. And you can see those on my rocker. And so overall height is going to be 28 inches for the legs and 26 inches wide. And they're going to match the tabletop, which I'm actually going to have built for me. It'll be 76 inches long and 38 inches wide. And my tools simply aren't good enough to get a perfectly flat tabletop at 38 inches wide. I always love visiting my hardwood supplier where the tools are amazing, including these massive bandsaw blades. But today the mission was to go through the white oak lumber pile and pick out some winners. And through the magic of video editing, they did the glue up for me. And because they have commercial equipment that can do surface planing this wide, the top is perfectly flat and perfectly smooth. So eventually this is going to get handed off to my son, Matt, and a little commemoration of our 2020 canoe project. Now it's on to some cutting. Now this is some extra five quarter white oak lumber that I purchased for the legs. And all of these pieces are going to have to be cut. Ultimately, the legs are going to be in L shape very similar to what I did for the Limbert rocker and also a sofa table that we did a little earlier this year. And so these are going to be just butt jointed, much like the Limbert rocker. And I'm gonna add some dowels to strengthen these after the glue dries. And with a little soapy water, try to get as much glue out of the way as possible. Now the next component on these legs is to include that arc feature on the front of the legs. And so using a compass, I'm able to draw that nice gradual line and get these cut out on the bandsaw. And I'm gonna save that other piece because that's gonna help me with clamping. And I wound up building a number of these small little templates to help me make sure that my drill patterns were uniform on each leg. With my favorite Japanese flush cutting saw, these are easy to trim down. Each leg will have four vertical staves, which matches the design on the back of each of those chairs. And these are three quarter inches in thickness and an inch and a quarter in width. And this is my first chance to lay out the pieces and see how it's gonna look. And I really like the design so far. But now I've got to make a decision on joinery. Pocket screws, maybe? 
No. I like domino joints, but... So just like on my rocker build, I'm going to use oak dowels and I'm going to wind up building a couple of additional jigs to help me with straight line drilling into the oak stock and evenly space out the holes for a good fit. This particular template will be for the back slats or the vertical staves between each leg. And setting it up on the oak stock, it makes it easy to drill those out. I've got another small jig to evenly space out the holes for each one of the staves too. And again, the jig helps you with straight drilling down into the stock. And one more jig to help me lay out those major frame pieces between the two legs. Now this will be the trestle that runs between the two leg sections. And I'm adding a little bit of a miter detail on this piece and also on the legs. I'm also going to make some small trim caps for each end of the trestle because I'm going to put the frame together with really heavy duty screws. And the reason for that is I need to be able to take these legs apart. The tabletop is heavy on its own, much less with the addition of the legs. So I will need to take it apart to make it easier to move and easier to carry. But these caps came out great. And so now with the dowels installed in each one of the staves, it's time to put the center section together first. And that extra curved piece up at top helps me with clamping. And now each leg section center is complete. And I'll be using the much thicker, heavier duty oak dowels here on the frame. I really like how beefy these legs are gonna be and they are starting to look fantastic. And now because we use the drill jigs, it all fits together really nicely. Now we're gonna move on to some additional support for the legs. I'm gonna use a flat panel on the top of the legs, giving me an overall height of 28 and a quarter inches. And I will screw this down into the legs and this flat plate will be used to mount the leg to the bottom of the table. And these are heavy duty cabinet screws with flat heads on them. So with a slight indentation into the wood, they go down below the surface and allows me to put that bottom onto the tabletop flush. Now I'm gonna wind up building a small two and a half inch apron for the underside of the table. And I'm gonna be using oak dowels to put these together too. And then I'll use a Forstner bit to provide me a, a relatively deep hole so that I can use long cabinet screws to attach the apron to the table. And of course, everything is pre-drilled. I just don't show it in the video. But these help lock the apron down to the tabletop really well. And a big shocker here on this one by three lumber that I thought was all the same, except when you go to install it and find out You've got to do some plane work to get everything squared away. And then I used my mini plane to help chamfer the edges and take the hard corners off the apron.
Nothing's worse than dragging your knuckles or your knees on a sharp edge while you're trying to enjoy dinner. And now with the trestle installed with these really heavy duty long screws, it stiffens up the entire leg structure. And these end caps are going to be used with these thicker cherry dowels and they'll fit nicely to cover those holes. They came out really nice considering I just did these by hand on the belt sander. And they're snug, but you can still take them out. And they look great. And so normally this is the boring part of the video when we talk about finishing, but I wanted to include a 45 degree bevel on this tabletop. And I also don't show on camera that we had to set up a little bit of a track saw to clean up the edges of this tabletop and bring it down to that 76 inch total length. But after the edges were mitered, it was time to hand it off to my finishing director, Matt, to help me with the final sanding and the finishing. We wound up sanding down to 220 grit while using power tools here but ultimately Matt finished out the surfaces by hand sanding with 320 grit. And he also used a pre-stain conditioner before we put down the color to closely match the chairs. And this is something we've learned from other projects. Without using the pre-stain conditioner, sometimes your stain penetration can be uneven on the surface. We also chose to use Verathane wood stain, not a sponsor, but we like using it and the color pretty closely matches the mission style chairs that we wanted to keep from the original set. So while it appears to go on relatively dark on the surface, after wiping it down, it's essentially an even golden tone. And of course the legs with all of the vertical staves getting in the way, this is going to be a little bit harder to finish because of all the nooks and crannies. And after the stain dried, we started with the first coat of polyurethane. Now I sometimes get into small arguments or exchanges with other woodworkers about the best finish to use for certain wood projects. But when it comes to a tabletop, or something that I know is going to get wet from uh, grandkids spilling milk or something on the surface, polyurethane is impenetrable and makes for a great finish on the table. And as for the legs, it turned out to be much easier for Matt to spray these with polyurethane than it would be to try to manage the drips that you would get from a brush. And so let's talk a little bit about the summary of the project. This was an expensive project. The cost of the white oak was just ridiculous, but it had to be paid in order to get this project done. And although I could say it's priceless, yeah, I mean, you know, 1400 bucks is huge for a project like this. Well, it's time to do the assembly. And anytime that we get down on the floor, you know, Dash thinks it's playtime, but uh, it's always nice to have him around, especially walking around the shop to keeps us going. But it was relatively easy to put this table together to get the apron installed, to get the legs positioned with the trestle between the legs, and a little finishing end cap here went on pretty easily with a little extra tap. Overall, this project looks really fantastic, and I'm glad I paid the money to have the tabletop glued and professionally planed across that full width. It's perfectly flat. The legs just came out great and they fit the chairs really well. It turned out to be a fantastic project. Thanks for watching.